Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Year End Close Tips and Tricks for Dynamics 365 Business Central. My name is Katie and I'll be the facilitator today. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question area in the control panel on the right hand side of your screen and we'll answer questions at the end. The session will be recorded and posted on our blog as well as shared with you later this week. Now I'd like to introduce our presenter today, Ray Wong, Dynamics 365 Business Central Team Lead. Right, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Katie. Hi, everyone. I really appreciate you spending, you know, taking time out of your day to join this webinar. And today we're just going to go over year end closing tips and tricks for Dynamics 365 Business Central. So here's our agenda for today. So, first, I'm just going to do a brief introduction of myself and what we're going to be doing. We're going to talk about things to watch out for some of the common pitfalls and how to avoid them, tips and tricks. We're gonna walk through the process step-by-step -step on how to complete a year end. So a step-by-step -step guide on closing your books accurately and efficiently. And then we'll mention some of the key reports to run that you need to generate for a comprehensive year end review. My name is Ray Wong and I'm a team lead on the Dynamics 365 Business Central team. I've been in the Dynamics ecosystem for about 20 plus years, and I've been with Encore for nine years. So typically what I do is I design, implement, and support the Dynamics 365 Business Central system. So we'll start off the process. Um, typically the year end, there's about eight steps. So we'll go through each of the steps and then we'll go through some of the tips and tricks of each step, things to watch out for and things to look out for. For our American friends, the first thing you need to do before January 31st is to process your 1099s. So you'll have to make sure that this option is enabled in your feature management. There's also a vendor 1099 information report and make sure that you run a test report. It's suggested to test you know, your vendor's 1099 first as one of them as a test run to make sure that it's properly. So for the vendor 1099 information report, you can view the balances, make adjustments if necessary through the vendor ledger entries when necessary. You can order pre-printed forms or you can submit them electronically to IRS. So for your American friends, 1099 is the first thing that we'd wanna complete. The next step is to go into your system and to review and post any of the open documents. For example, your purchase invoices, your sales invoice, sales orders, and any inventory adjustments. So we wanna make sure that these are posted before we go into the year end part. Other reports to save. So from a general ledger perspective, you wanna run the trial balance and you wanna run it by summary or detail and by dimension. Some of the financial statements that you should be running are the balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow, and those should tie into your trial balance. From accounts payable side, you wanna run the age accounts payable report, and you wanna make sure that the balance uh, matches what's in your general ledger control account. So we'll talk a little bit more about the subledger control accounts, subledger to the control accounts, and if it doesn't balance. Other reports to print are to save the accounts receivable. So you would like to print the aged accounts receivable report, and you want to make sure that the balance matches to the control account in your AR account. Sometimes you have multiple AR control accounts and you have to add them up together to make sure that it balances. Similarly, for the bank reconciliations, we want to print the bank reconciliation reports and we want to make sure that it matches the number in your bank control account or in your bank card ledger card account. When you're looking at fixed assets, we want to run the report called net book value report by a fixed asset posting group. And this report should tie to your fixed asset balances in your general ledger. As you can see the trend here, we're going through each of the modules and we make sure we're printing the reports and we're making sure that it ties to the control accounts. Similarly with your inventory module. So for your inventory module, you'll be running the report which is called the inventory valuation. And you wanna make sure that it ties into the balance into your general ledger. 
So those are the, the key reports that we need to run beforehand to make sure that uh, we have a copy or save it. The next thing that we do is the first step, which is preparation. So if you're inside your business central, you would search up chart of accounts, which lists your chart of accounts, you know, in order from the number. So you want to add the column you can see here on the right hand side, which is called income statement and balance sheet. You want to go through your accounts to make sure that they're properly classified as balance sheet or income statement. As you know, balance sheet rolls into the next year and for closing. And when you close income statement, it rolls into your retained earnings. So you want to make sure that they're correct. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen clients mislabel the balance sheet or income statement. And what happens is they have to do year and adjustments that, uh, you know, reverse and everything. So it gets a little bit messy and the audit trail gets a little bit messy from that perspective. The next is to go into your control accounts. We want to make sure, first of all, that the sub ledger matches the general ledger control accounts. For example, your AP, AR, fixed assets, inventory, items like that. And we, as you can see here, direct posting is turned off on here. So we don't want to make any direct posting entries into our control accounts typically. So we want to make sure that we go into our controls accounts and to make sure that direct posting option is turned off. So the next thing that we'll look at is what happens or what are some of the reasons when your sub ledger, AP, AR, and inventory and fixed assets, if it doesn't match to your general ledger account. So what are some of the reasons why they don't match? So one of the reasons which we mentioned before, which is direct posting. If direct posting is turned on, you can do a general ledger entry into the control accounts and it throws the entry off. The second thing is when you first implemented your business central system, typically as the consultants should check if the first open entries do match the control accounts to the, to the sub ledger accounts. Sometimes it doesn't match. And what happens is that number replicates and it continues flowing through the next month, next month, the next month, and then you'll have outages each, on each month. And a third reason why your sub ledger doesn't match your general ledger is when the posting groups are not set up properly. So this is typically responsibility of the consultant, but you should really take a look at your first, you know, closing year end uh, to make sure that it's set up properly and your balances are correct. What to do if they don't match? If they don't match, it really depends if it's a material or non-material item. And you'd also have to look at each of the months because if your first month, say January is out $100, and if the next month is still $100, so that means the entry the error is in your January month. If February is 120, it means there was a $100 outage in the first month and $20 outage in the second month. So you have to go through, match your sub ledger to your general ledger entries to make sure that they match from that perspective. Typically what people do is they load both lists into Excel and then they do a VLOOKUP or a match from that perspective to see which entries don't match or which entries were manually entered in or if direct posting was turned off and there was a general ledger entry. So once that's checked and once that's correct, the next step is to search uh, into the accounting period. So what we do is we type in accounting period and it's under administration and there's the accounting periods. When we click on that link, what we have here on the left-hand side is under the main menu, there's the inventory period, create year, and close year. What we want to do is pick on the third option, which is close year. So once I click on close year, it tells you that what date it's closing from. So in this case, it's 0101-2024 to 1231-2024. And it says that once the fiscal period is closed, it cannot be opened again. So it's really important that you do this in a sandbox or in a test environment, your year-end closing process. So I'll talk about that a few times. Uh, make sure you do it in a sandbox or test environment to make sure that the closing entries are proper, you know, the retained earnings flows properly from the income statement, the balance sheet moves forward. 
you want to make sure that that's accurate first because you can't really, well, according to this, you won't be able to open your entries again. So there is a trick for opening the fiscal year. I don't really recommend it, but your consultant can help you using configuration packages to open up the years and uh, the years again. So it's not recommended, but that's a little bit of a secret trick from that perspective. Once we're done the close year, the next step is in the same menu, it's called create year. So in this case, I'm creating my starting date, which is uh, January 1st, 2026 in this screenshot. And we have the number of periods. So in this case, what we're doing is 12 periods and the period length is 1M, which is for one month, which stands for one month. So that's if, you're, if your year end starts uh, on January 1st. If it starts from a different date, you can put in a different month, for example, March or April 1st. Once you've done that, in the accounting period screen, you'll see that the entries have been created and you can see a checkbox that is showing that that's the new fiscal year. I don't have a screenshot, but above the years that are closed, we'll have a checkbox saying that those years are closed. You are able to enter transactions into closed years, like your uh, uh, adjustment entries from your auditors or any entries from that perspective. So that's the next step there, which is creating the new fiscal year. Once you're done that, you'll search close income statement, which is a task, so which is what you'll do next. When you click on the screen, there'll be a few options there. So we'll go through these options first of all. So fiscal year ending date, in my case, this screenshot is uh, December 31st, 2023. As I mentioned, it depends on when your month or your year end is, you'll put in the proper year end date if it's in the middle of the year or in a different than the calendar year. The general journal templates, in this case, we'll just use a general. And for the general journal batch, typically uh, a tip here is to create a batch for each of the year ends so you can delete it afterwards once it's been posted. In this example, I call it uh, year end 2024, YE 2024. So I know that the entries are in there in case there's multiple entries or multiple batches and I don't want to get them all mixed up. Document number, you can give it a document number. And the key thing here for retained earnings account Make sure you have the proper retained earnings account. Uh, I've seen people close into a different retained earnings, then it gets a little messy. You have to reverse the entry, redo the entry. And from an audit perspective, that does get really messy. The next step we're going to show you is post retained earnings. So how does it post to the retained earnings? It can be in balance or it can be in details. We'll show you the examples in a second. And a posting description, we'll call it close income statement. If you're using intercompany or, or different uh, multiple companies, there's you can close by the business unit code. And we'll talk about the dimensions, which we can close by dimension also. So when I click on OK on this one, or sorry, going back here, you can schedule it for whenever you want to do it, or you can click OK and it processes it right away. As you can see here, there's a C beside the, the entries here in my, in my general journal batch year end 2024. On the left-hand side, there's a C there, means it's a closing entry, and it's got the amounts, the debits, and the credits going into my retained earnings. So these are as balance. If we go back here, when we, oops. If we go back here for post-retained earnings, we can also pick details. And what happens there is it goes by uh, detail transaction amount. So you can see here, there's 18101 undeposit uh, funds cash. There's multiple lines for it. So it's in details as opposed to balance, which is uh, more like a summary from that perspective. As I've mentioned before, you can close by business unit. So if you're using multiple companies or intercompany from that perspective, you'd want to close by business unit. And when you click on dimensions, the three dots there, you can close by also uh, by dimension. So typically we want to select the dimensions here. So I've selected all dimensions, area, business group, customer, department, purchaser, salesperson from that perspective. So that's why we'll be closing in that. The next thing to do is to run the trial balance and you wanna make sure that the, 
entries flow properly. So your balance sheet moves into your next year and your income statement accounts should be zero on your new trial balance and they should have flowed, in, flowed into the retained earnings. So you run your trial balance and you make sure that that's correct. So one of the tips that we mentioned here is to make sure you copy the company into a test company or to a sandbox environment and test out the closing to make sure it's possible or make sure it's proper. Uh, as you, as I've mentioned, reversing the entries can get very messy from that perspective. If you have adjusting entries, we would go into the adjusting entries and then we would rerun uh, afterwards. Once you've done the closing entries, we would rerun the close. So here's the year-end adjustments. So I'm making the adjustment entries and I go back to my close income statement again. I'll rerun it. And this time when it creates the adjusting entries, it'll only do the adjusting entries that was newly uh, created. It won't do the previous entries that we've closed before. Afterwards, the final thing to do is to go into your general ledger setup and change the allow posting from and to to the specific dates to make sure that people don't post more entries into the previous year. Oops. So those are the eight main steps uh, that we have here. So first, you process your 1099s, then you would close your year, then afterwards create your year, we'll close the income statement, make any adjustment audit entries, Reclose again and make sure you print the trial balances and the reports. And that's all I have for this session. Thanks, Ray. So again, if anyone does have any questions, please enter them into the question area in the control panel. The first one I have here is wondering, um, can you not post into the current year until the prior year has been closed? You are, that's a good question. You are able to post in the current year uh, if the prior year has, hasn't been closed. So you're able to post in the current year. So typically uh, most companies don't really get to their year in closing until you know February or March. So you can still process transactions before uh, you close in the new year. Great question there. Night follow up to that one is just so you can create the current year before the close. Yes, that is correct. Great. I don't see any that are coming in. I'll give everybody a couple of minutes here. In the meantime, I'm going to add the link to our events page in the chat if you'd like to check out previous webinars or register for upcoming sessions. I'll also add the link where you can set your email preferences and opt into our email so you can stay in the know about upcoming events and see our latest blog articles. I don't see any others that have come in here, Ray. Um, so if that's, nobody has any additional questions, I think that's all for today. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Ray, for the information. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of your day.